Aloha fellow teachers. Is it a good sign when you're in a workshop and you find yourself constantly looking at the clock? <sighs> you know that feeling. When you became a classroom teacher, you wanted to avoid seeing that type of behavior in your students. Of course, no one wants to bore an audience. You want to be the teacher who has students walking in the door saying, Mrs. T, thank God you teach my last class of the day. Or during open house, having parents walk in the door saying, oh, you're Mrs. Turbyville. My daughter talks about you all the time. It's not hard to gain a reputation for teaching interesting lessons if you put effort into injecting a little fun every day. Today, I will present three simple ideas to add variety to your teaching techniques. Illustrated Cornell notes, improving with improv, and reviewing with a fly swatter game. First on the list, illustrated Cornell notes is nothing new. Using tables, diagrams, and illustrations is very useful. Using these things helps the learner see what's relevant. It's very logical. It's also very predictable. And therein lies the problem. What if we try two things? First, explain a concept in an unusual way. And second, use images that relate to what a particular grade level likes. Let's take a look at a grammar lesson for elementary or middle school students. Following Cornell Notes format, we see basic questions on the left and answers on the right. Please pause the video so you can read these blocks. Typically, you would begin by covering up the right-hand side of the keystone block to see if students already know the answers to the two questions posed. You then walk students through the second pair of blocks. When we reach the third pair of blocks, that's when the attention span for non-readers tends to fade. This particular block is about spelling rules. That's where we're trying to get students to note that irregular verbs change in unexpected ways. In other words, they transform. What better way to catch the attention of a typical boy by bringing in the image of a transformer? Needless to say, you need to know your students and a little bit about pop culture. I don't know a lot about Optimus Prime, but I do know enough to hook students' attention with his image. The final two blocks show students that the third type of verbs are known as irregular verbs. It would have been so easy to lose my audience without an interesting image, but I did not disappoint here. Many teachers have told me over the years, hey, I'm not an entertainer. This is true. You're not being paid to sing, dance, or tell jokes, but by simply adding a little creativity, you can make a drab lesson special. Don't be the type of cook who throws food on a plate. Be a thoughtful chef who adds spices and garnishes to make a lesson special. Let's move on to comprehension checks using small groups. Students love improvised skits. The next time you're in the mood for something out of the box when it comes to formative assessments, try an activity I call, what's wrong with this picture? Small groups of three to four students work best. Give each team at least five minutes to come up with a skit. It may take a little longer if the concept is complex, and some groups may be a little shy, but give them enough practice and they'll learn to love it. They will act out a scenario 
while intentionally adding incorrect information. For example, if the word is tangent, they may set up a British baking show scenario where a contestant describes his cake to the two hosts as having an ace of spades and king of hearts made of sugar leaning on each other at their top edges in a tangent. This, of course, doesn't meet the mathematical definition and the audience would have to correct the description to earn a point. My third and final recommendation is a review activity based on the game Slapjack. Usually, you print vocabulary items on cards, read the definitions aloud, and have students slap the correct term. The object of the game is to collect as many cards as possible. Playing the game this way, however, can be time consuming to make multiple sets of cards for several teams. You can solve this problem by projecting vocabulary words onto a whiteboard. Have your students take turns coming up to the board and scoring points by slapping a word with a fly swatter. They will have a ball. Just make sure you don't have too many or too few words displayed. Usually 20 to 30 items are best. If you have three or four players up at the whiteboard, I recommend that you allow only one guess per student. You'll also have to warn the audience not to shout out the answers until at least 30 seconds have elapsed. If only one or two students in the audience knows the answer, it tells you how little the curriculum has sunk in. Many elementary school teachers and ESL teachers use this game, but I found that high school students like it just as much as younger ones. Along the same lines as the fly swatter game, the next time you're reviewing, you may want to try a modified Pictionary. This time, you would challenge students to draw illustrations of vocabulary items. I say modified Pictionary because you're not supposed to use symbols. In conclusion, rigor, relevance, and relationships are necessary when working with any student. These simple ideas will go a long way towards building all three. It just takes time to build a little fun into your lesson plans. Good luck and aloha.